pleasure to be back here presenting again. Appreciate the, the kind introduction and the opportunity to update uh, your audience on the Volition RX story. As Gilbert mentioned, we are Volition RX, uh, ticker VNRX on the NYSE American Stock Exchange. I would just like to point you to our forward-looking statements and disclaimer slide. Just a reminder that I'll be making some forward-looking statements today that may or may not materialize in the future. A little bit about Volition. We are a diagnostics company. We are developing primarily blood tests to screen for different disease states. And as you can see from this slide, we have five verticals. <clears throat> On the top left, is, the center left is NUQ. Uh, all of our verticals start with the acronym NUQ. It stands for nucleosome quantification. And NUQ here on the center left, those are our human studies in oncology. So we are clinical stage uh, in colorectal cancer, lung cancer, um, and we are seeking to launch studies in, uh, in two bloodborne cancers this year. In the um, middle center is NUQ VET. That's our animal health division. We are commercial stage here. So we have a commercial product, blood test to screen for two common canine cancers in, in dogs. And I'm, I'm pausing a little bit just to allow for the translation. In the middle right is NUQ Capture. That is our... Um, uh, manufacturing facility in Belgium, where we do uh, third-party sample processing, antibody supply, and other services for third parties, primarily in Europe. NUQ Nets in the uh, uh, bottom left, that is uh, our clinical stage program in human health, but looking for the first time uh, at non-oncology-based disease states at, uh, at sepsis and COVID-19. And NUQ Discover in the bottom right is um, uh, largely our R&D platform. So our patents are, are housed here. A lot of our technological breakthroughs, um, ideas for new uh, clinical studies, for new potential products. A lot of the research and development is done through NUQ Discover. Um, most of you are probably interested in NUQ Vet because that is our first commercial product. So I'll, I'll go right to NUQ Vet and spend most of the presentation on, on NUQ Vet. So if we just move forward a few slides. So the brand name of this product is our NUQ VET cancer screening test. It is commercial stage. Uh, it's for sale through Texas A&M University through their, web, through their website. And we recently announced a significant licensing deal with the Hesca Corporation. And they plan to begin selling this blood test through their sales channels late this year or early in 2023. So a little bit about the market for um, canine cancer screening. There are 77 million canines in the United States alone. Uh, there are 6 million of those every year that are diagnosed with cancer. The problem is this, that the vast majority of the 6 million canines diagnosed with cancer annually in the United States are almost all diagnosed because they're symptomatic or sick first. That creates a problem because if the animal is sick first and then it's diagnosed and it turns out it has cancer, it's invariably a late stage cancer and um, neither the canine nor the pet owner have a lot of really good options. Canines do not get screened currently asymptomatically for cancer because it's too expensive, too invasive, and too risky to do so until the uh, implementation or entry of our blood test. Currently, the confirmatory diagnoses for cancer in canines are either scanning or imaging technologies, so x-rays, CAT scans, uh, MRIs, or biopsies, which are, is a surgical procedure to take a tissue sample or samples from the canine. 
Um, both of these modalities are expensive, they're both invasive, and they both could potentially harm the canine. Uh, for these reasons, canines, if they're not sick, generally do not undergo this type of screening asymptomatically for cancer. So this is the problem. Canines currently don't get screened asymptomatically for cancer. Therefore, the vast majority of diagnoses are made because the animal is sick first, and that's generally too late. Now for the first time, because of the um, development of our blood test, canines can be screened um, without risk. It's a simple blood test. So there's essentially no way to harm the animal with a simple blood test. We're accurate, as you can see here, um, we're generating accuracy levels of between 77 and 82% accuracy. Uh, we're inexpensive. The cost to the consumer will be around 50 US dollars. So a very affordable price point. So because of the um, non-invasive nature of the test, the um, essentially risk-free um, testing uh, through blood, because of the low price point and the accuracy, now for the first time in, in animal health, canines can get screened asymptomatically for cancer. You can see the two cancer types here for which we screen, hemangiosarcoma, and canine lymphoma, they account for about one third of all canine cancers that are diagnosed annually. So we're screening for a significant uh, percentage of canine cancers. Ideally, we'll be able to add a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth cancer to the test and be able to screen for the majority of canine cancers. So we're in clinic uh, looking at other canine cancers now to see if we can do just that. We're not the only ones really excited about this blood test. Uh, the HESCA Corporation is also, and others are very interested in this. And as you can see from this slide, uh, about a month, month and a half ago, we signed a global licensing and supply agreement with the HESCA Corporation. It's valued, uh, at, it's a $28 million licensing deal with, um, with payments going forward as well. You can see a little bit more about the agreement here. And the specifics here. So it is a $28 million licensing deal. We've received 10 million already. Uh, that was upon contract signing. And then the additional 18 million uh, comes when certain milestones are met. Six and a half million when HESCA launches through their point of care technology and six and a half million when HESCO launches through reference labs. And the last 5 million milestone payment, we have not disclosed uh, what that criteria is to secure that payment, but we expect the 6.5 and 6.5 um, to come to volition in Q4 or Q1 um, of this year and next year. So, um, so fairly soon, we're expecting the additional 13 million in milestone payments. In return for um, the, the upfront monies and milestone payments, we've given HESCA exclusivity on point of care. So they have a machine called the Element I that um, processes a blood sample at the veterinary clinic and then produces results within a matter of minutes. And we've given uh, non-exclusive rights on reference labs uh, for HESCA. And that's when uh, a blood sample is taken and several vials are sent to a lab for analysis. That's typically when uh, the vet is ordering five or 10 or 15 different blood tests on the canine. So exclu exclusive on the point of care, non-exclusive on the reference lab side. We also, in addition to the 28 million in upfront and milestone payments, we also get $10 for every um, blood test that HESCO processes through reference labs. And we get um, under $10 for every blood test that HESCO processes through their point of care element I technology. So we expect this um, licensing deal and the HESCO sales to begin generating significant sales revenue uh, for Volition really beginning next year in 2023 and then continuing to ramp uh, from there on out. So very excited about this opportunity.
And then just because I want to leave some time for questions, I'll just spend a couple minutes on new QNets. And I might speak a little bit faster. I'm sorry um, for the translation if I'm speaking a little bit too fast, but I do want to cover this in the next couple of minutes. Um, Mitosis is uh, one of the body's first immune responses to uh, an invading pathogen or bacteria. And it's when your white blood cells inject neutrophil extracellular traps or NETs is the acronym. Those um, are, are, are cytotoxic proteins that as you can see on the diagram on the right, um, act like a spider web or a web um, to trap the invading bacteria or virus and neutralize it through cytotoxic proteins. Um, in, in certain instances, um, a person's immune system goes into overdrive and overproduces these nets. Because they contain cytotoxic proteins, the overproduction of nets can actually harm uh, a person, even though it's supposed to prevent infection um, or fight off the infection or the invading uh, pathogen. They can actually um, you know, poison the person's own organs. They can cause blood clots. They can cause organ failure and a weakened immune system over time because of the excessive production of nets. That's what kills a person in, um, in sepsis and COVID. Uh, right now, the doctors and patients don't know which patients infected with COVID or sepsis will have the very severe immune response, the cytokine storm or this um, overproduction of nets and which ones won't. Our technology, uh, is able to measure with very high accuracy the amount of nets in a person's blood sample. So what we don't know is how far in advance of the onset of severe symptoms uh, does a person's immune system overproduce nets, and then what is the lag time between the severe reaction to infection or to the overproduction of nets. If there is that lag time, we might have the ability to identify those patients most at risk or very likely to develop the severe response to infection and those patients could then be given medical resources ahead of the severe immune response to reduce some of the damage done to their organs, to reduce morbidity rates and reduce mortality rates. So we'll have additional data on this NETS program, longitudinal data over the course of this year. So very excited about this program as well. Sepsis is the leading cause of death in most hospitals. And right now, doctors and patients don't have good tools to predict which patients infected with sepsis or COVID will develop very severe responses. And then I'll just wrap up with our financial slide and then open it up to questions. So there's a few ones okay. here. So the Perfect. first one coming from Tevin is asking you, what will be your sales forecast in Europe in 2023 now that your new code test, that test has been approved? Right, so it works a little bit differently in Europe. In Europe, you can get a CE mark um, which allows for the sale of a medical device in Europe ahead of clinical data. So we kind of did in the US, you can't get FDA approval unless you have clinical data. So it kind of works in, in a slightly different order or it can work in a different order in Europe. We went to CE market first, we'll then provide additional data. So we have the ability to sell the product, but nobody in Europe will buy the product unless there's clinical data to support its efficacy or accuracy. So we've done it kind of in reverse. It's, a, it's a approved basically. Uh, for sale in Europe, but now we need to show the clinical data that, that it works, what is the accuracy, um, and then that combination should allow for sales to ramp. We haven't given any sales forecasts for, for Europe for next year, but this is, um, the NETS product is potentially very, you know, very significant revenue generator for volition because um, COVID is obviously very common. Sepsis, uh, many people don't know, is the leading cause of death in hospitals. Um, it's a big problem for these hospitals. They, they have a hard time predicting which patients are going to get really sick. Now there's a tool hopefully that will enable them to predict which patients are going to get really sick and, and administer medical resources ahead of time. Uh, next one from WeFam here is asking, what are the countries uh, currently the new cure tests are available where, uh, and will you be expanding more? The VET product is the only product for which we're commercial uh, currently that is available primarily in the United States through Texas A&M. It will be available through the HESCO Corporation later this year or early next year. It's also available for sale um, in Asia. We, we also signed a licensing deal with Sage Healthcare out of Singapore. So it is for sale through Sage, primarily in Singapore, but they do have distribution in other parts of Asia. Okay, this one's from Mark. He's asking you how long is the term for the HESCO deal for the point of care exclusivity? 20 years. 20 years? Okay. 
And one final question here from Hao. He is asking, do you have the need for uh, wasting uh, capital with, uh, in near term at all? We have a strong balance sheet. We finished the quarter with uh, Q1 with 20, almost 24 million in cash. Uh, we have additional payments likely to come from HESCA, uh, totaling about 13 million between Q4 and Q1. Uh, we do have an ATM facility in place. So um, opportunistically, we, we could always utilize the ATM facility. So we're not, we're not under pressure um, to raise capital currently, but um, you know, if, if an opportunity presented itself, if it was a quality investor, um, if, if there's high volume, you know, trading volume, we could always, you know, strengthen our cash position through the usage of the ATM or other, uh, other options to us. But right now we have a strong balance sheet. Sure. Thank you, Scott, for your time, for giving us an update here. Absolutely. Thanks, Gilbert, for having me. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, everyone, to, for listening. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.